Hello everyone, welcome to Twitch on Capitol Hill and uh, we're going to have our debut discussion here today on Twitch. I'm not sure this has ever happened before on Capitol Hill and it's to discuss maybe the key hidden issue in saving our country and saving the planet and that is transmission. How do we get electricity? from the desert? How do we get electricity from uh, the oceans? How do we get transmission from the most remote parts of the United States that is renewable into the places where people live? And so that's basically something that can be solved with transmission technology. And that's just another way of saying the wires that are out there uh, that carry the electricity, and here we're talking about wind and solar and geothermal and hydropower and move it to the parts of our country that need it so that we can have an all-electric revolution. Uh, we can have electric cars, electric stoves, electric heating. Uh, we can move to an all-electric uh, future and say goodbye to oil, gas, and coal, greenhouse gas emitting fuels, and, uh, and do so in a way which then gives people lower price electricity, clean electricity, uh, and electricity uh, which is reliable. So that's what we're going to discuss today, this incredible revolution in transmission and the bill which I have introduced, the Charge It Act, so that we move to this future. And I'm joined here today by Josh Melko, who is an incredibly brilliant college professor who is spending this year with me uh, in my office in the United States Senate. And uh, he teaches thermodynamics in college. He teaches other subjects that are incomprehensible to laymen like me, but they all go to simply explaining how we can do this, how we can make this quick transition if we have the political will to get it done. So welcome, Josh. It's great to be here. Thank you so much, Senator. It's been great working as a congressional staffer in your office, and it's a real highlight for me to be here today and really welcome you to Twitch and, and be here for the start of your Twitch streaming adventure. And Twitch, you know, is all about the community. It's about the audience. That's why you're here to interact with them. So before we dive into the CHARGE Act, I want to take a, a few moments for you to say hi to the people that are here. So I'm just going to turn over to this screen and say hello to uh, Slayer and Paul and Gath and Adam and all these people here. And uh, see, Senator, if you have a question for the audience. Well, yeah. W where are you from? And, uh, and how important is it to you that, uh, that we save the planet, that we move to a, a renewable uh, revolution in our country so that we can lead the rest of the world. So just love to hear from you uh, because obviously no one can do it alone, but if we all come together as a team, uh, we might just reach a day where children have to look to the history books to find that there ever was such a crisis, uh, this climate threat to our planet. But uh, we're going to have to make some very tough, smart decisions right now, and that's why we're here today. So we'd love to hear from you. Uh, in terms of uh, where you are, what you're thinking, and uh, what your vision is for how we can solve this problem. So we have uh, some people from Michigan, Mississippi, UK, so people all around the world here tuning in, San Jose, Massachusetts, so one of uh, your constituents Beautiful. here, uh, Northern Virginia, uh, currently in rural Mississippi, Sacramento, Florida. So yeah, we got people from all over the world tuning in, and you know, it's it's... Twitch is all about this this community, engaging with them. It's also a, a dynamic platform, so you, you want to have some production value. We're going to keep things pretty simple today, but I do have some sound effects. And I'm going to sprinkle these in throughout yeah. to, to let you know yeah, how... I love to hear sound effects. How they're, I'm know, on Twitch. You're, you're on and Twitch. And Twitch is sound effects. Twitch is in part yeah. sound effects. Uh, sound effects like when the audience is really happy with what Beautiful. you said. <laughs> or something's right on spot. Maybe they're really, really hyped about something. <laughs> Too much? Is that okay? Uh, I think that's good. That was for solar. Yeah, okay. Right? That one's I think for that solar. last yeah, one yeah. was for solar because that that could be really the big part of this whole revolution. But all of it's going to be part of a 
uh, uh, part of the story. So I like uh, Twitch is cool. I like being I like being on Twitch. So uh, so what um, uh, what can we talk about in terms of Josh? How long these lines take to build so we can bring the electricity in from the more remote but renewable rich parts of our country. Um, how are we going to do that? What's the what's the the plan for being able to get this done? I mean, the Charge Act is there to incentivize it, uh, right. but uh, can you explain what that transition would look like? Yeah, I mean, it's going to take some time, and that's you know the best time to start this would have been years ago. And the next best time, of course, is right now to to start planning these large lines because they do take up really large footprints, and you want to make sure everybody's involved in that process and. To learn more um, about actual setting the problem statement here and what your charge act really addresses, we're actually going to react to a video, which is a very Twitch thing to do a react video. So we're gonna watch a video, and if at any point in the video you wanna pause it and react to it, just tell me to pause it. Does that sound okay? This is fun, yeah. Let's, All right. let's go. All right, let's do it. So. This is a map of where everyone in the continental U.S. lives, the density of each county. Here's New York City, L.A., Chicago, and here's where every big power plant is currently. Appropriately, they tend to be where the people are. In Washington, D.C., where I live, we get nearly all our electricity from surrounding states' power plants, mostly nuclear and natural gas. Electricity goes from the power plant through big high voltage transmission lines to a substation where the electricity is dispersed onto smaller, lower power distribution lines that send it into my house. Like Vermont, DC also plans to be greener. The goal is to have 100% renewable sources making our electricity by 2032. It's part of a national goal too. President Biden wants to reduce emissions in the US 50% by 2030 with nearly half of U.S. power coming from solar plants by 2050. That means switching out those natural gas plants for wind turbines, coal plants for solar farms. Lowering emissions also means switching from gas cars to electric cars, heating our buildings not with natural gas, but with electric heat pumps, cooking on electric stoves. Basically, we're gonna be using a lot more electricity. So let's Anyone just stop there. Can we just stop there for a second? Because I think that's important for people to understand that as we move from coal and natural gas and nuclear power, most likely uh, in the future, we're going to need a lot more electricity uh, because our vehicles are going to be all electric. It won't be gasoline that goes into the tank. Uh, and the same thing is true for all of the rest of, of the way in which we think about and fuel our country today. So we'll have to produce a lot more electricity. And this is the plan that we're talking about today to make it green, to make it clean, you know, to be using all of the natural resources which we have in our country. Uh, and then we might actually need twice as much electricity. But if we put a plan together, it can be all clean, all green. And, uh, and I, I think that's really what they're talking about here. Uh, and we might need anywhere from 40 to 100% more than we currently use, but we can do it because we are rich in renewable resources as long as we build the transmission technology. So can we keep going, Josh? Perfect. We're from 40 to 100% more than we currently use. So back to the map. If we're going to replace all these polluting energy plants, we can't just build a wind turbine in their place. They need to be where it's, you know, windy. This is a model created by Princeton, mapping out possible places in the continental U.S. where wind and solar projects could, in theory, be built. Aside from some offshore wind farms, it's mostly in the middle of the U.S. Another study found that these states have most of the wind and solar potential, yet the people living there would only make up 30% of the electricity demand. In a decarbonized future, we're going to need to get electricity from here to here. And we're going to move a lot of it. That's where high voltage transmission lines come in. I think the infrastructure is the most important thing. It doesn't get a lot of attention, but it really is the key. This is where the U.S. currently has high voltage transmission lines. 
The Princeton model shows us this is where new lines will need to be built if the U.S. uses all renewable energy by 2050. Can you but stop there for a second? Sure. Yeah, so think of it this way. When, when we were back 30 years ago, thinking about a telecommunications system, uh, we were thinking in the same way that Alexander Graham Bell was thinking. We weren't thinking digital, we were thinking analog. We weren't thinking broadband, we were thinking narrowband. Uh, it was just all old thinking. And of course, AT&T was a monopoly. They didn't need any competition. They, Ma Bell knew what was, what was the right thing for everybody, but it stultified technological innovation. It stultified our ability to be able to put the power at the ends of the networks into the hands of consumers. And so, to a certain extent, this, this grid that's being built out on the screen, it's, it's giving us kind of a vision for what we have to do if we're going to build the transmission lines that allows us to capture all of this great renewable energy potential in our country. Uh, and Thomas Alva Edison didn't think this way, but of course, unfortunately, too many electric utilities continue to think that way in the same way that too many telephone companies thought the same way Alexander Graham Bell did. But we're in the 21st century, and we just saw what happens in terms of this incredible revolution that can be unleashed. I, I've got here in my pocket, I've got, I've got a a device which is the same power as a computer on the Apollo mission. That was not on the scoreboard when we started to change over from the old AT&T to this new system. And that's what we have to do right now with electricity as well. Build out a network that allows for the transmission of wind and solar and geothermal and hydropower into all the places where it's needed. But as it says, it's not a simple process. So can you continue, Josh? Yeah but it's not a simple process. Every wire in your house has plastic over it because if two electrical lines get too close, but high voltage power lines are the bare active wire, no plastic. They're insulated by the air. Basically, if they're kept far enough apart from each other, it's safe. But they also have to be kept far away from everything, trees included. This is actually how some of the California wildfires were started. Trees coming in contact with the super big high voltage transmission lines. And those are what we'll need more of as we lengthen the distance from energy source to energy need. We'll also need to make many current ones even bigger because bigger means more power. Physically, the cables are thicker. The bigger the cable, the more power can run through them. And because they're bigger, they have to be really far apart for insulation and built higher up. It makes them kind of a pain to build, partly because of how large they are, but also how much private land they have to cross. Very often the developer can get 99% of the landowners to agree, but then there's then that last 1% and that can take forever and can crater the whole thing. So experts say we should start building now, even before we build the plants. You can do a generation project in a year. The transmission three, if you're lucky, but it can go over 10. We don't want to do this in a reactive uh, mode where we build a lot of stranded generation. We want to proactively build the transmission to where we know the resources are. And the thing about wind and solar resources is we know where they are. A greener grid in the U.S. means thinking nationally, building more transmission lines so when it's sunny in Arizona, it can power Chicago. And at night, Illinois wind can power Phoenix. To do that efficiently, the U.S. will need a new interconnected high voltage grid. So I think we'll, in the interest of time, stop there. And, you know, I think that frames the, the problem statement very nicely of, of the grid that we really need to build to be the infrastructure to really unleash that clean energy revolution. So now we're going to jump in and describe a little bit the uh, CHARGE Act. But for that, we're going to need a prop. Is that OK? Yeah, excellent. Let's do a prop. So, um, yeah, this is just our handy dandy uh, simple way of explaining what the CHARGE Act will do. And we have to get it passed because this is the vision. This is what we need. And if we do it, 
the revolution will happen. So this is a little bit like Field of Dreams. If we build it, it will come, meaning the renewable energy will be produced in our country. So the CHARGE Act, uh, connecting hard to reach areas with renewably generated energy. So we have to connect where the energy comes off of the ocean, off of the deserts, off of the prairies, off of people's roofs, and over to where it is needed. And Americans' clean energy is rapidly growing, but we need to build the power lines to bridge the gap between the people and clean power. So it's all there for us in the same way that um, Oil and gas companies, they find a way of going as far offshore as they have to go to drill. Uh, they found the most remote parts of America to drill. We now need to do the very same thing with renewables and then find a way to transmit it over wires uh, to the parts of the country where the people actually live. Uh, and in order to accomplish that, we just have to change the whole paradigm. We just have to think anew the way we did as we move from black rotary dial phones to this new supercomputer. And by the way, there was an interim period where everyone had a flip phone, but the flip phone was a vast improvement over the black rotary dial phone, and that's what we're going to have to do here, and we can do it all in a brief period of time. By the way, in Africa right now, 700 million people are walking around with a smartphone in their pockets. As people are leaving Ukraine, they have smartphones in their pockets. That was all invented in the United States, all made in the United States. We're the ones that moved. We have to do the same thing for the renewable revolution. So the United States is relying on old, inefficient, poorly connected systems to electrify um, uh, our entire economy. And the clean energy revolution will demand a super highway of interconnected transmission lines. So what does that mean? Well, in the 1950s, we were still kind of working off of two and three lane highways, and we said we needed a super highway. That's what we did all across the country. We call it the beltway around pretty much every major metropolitan area in the United States. For telecommunications, we needed a new information superhighway, and that's what we call this digital revolution right now, which, by the way, makes it possible for us to have a twitch this afternoon. Okay, would not happen if we did not move to broadband. This is not an analog world that we're living in right now. We have moved because after 100 years, oh, oh Lord, isn't it time for a little innovation? Well, the same thing is true here. We need the same kind of innovation, the same kind of forward-looking vision. And if we do it, uh, the wind and the solar and the other renewable sources, they will come to it. Uh, and, uh, and the same thing is, is, uh, is basically all dealt with in the legislation. So let me just go through it. The bill will, the bill will build new long-distance power lines and incorporate the latest technology to deliver more power. It holds utilities accountable to clean energy promises. A lot of these utilities are still tied to the old agenda. The same thing happened, by the way, with telecommunications. I won't name the companies that were the most retrograde, but uh, they're out there. And the same thing is going to happen here. People trying to hold on to the past, and uh, we just have to move the whole system. And it creates reliability. Uh, so that it protects against large-scale or long-duration blackouts. And what does that mean? Well, you know, the big argument made by fossil fuel industry is, well, you know, solar and wind, they're good, but they only can play a small role because they're not reliable. It's not always sunny. It's not always windy. What do you do then? Well, you have to rely upon us, oil and gas. Not true, says Josh. The truth <laughs> is... Uh, well, why not, Josh? Why is that not true? Because if we can connect, you know, these different parts of the country, the different regions with the long lines, right, then it will be windy somewhere, right? It will be so sunny somewhere, or you can store some of that as we build out more storage. You can do things on the demand side. So it's about investing in, in making the network that is there that can transmit wind energy energy from offshore 
you know, all the way over to the southeast or something. It's about moving sunshine in the southwest up to Chicago and vice versa. So when the utilities say you can't do that, that you can't have a reliable source of renewable energy, that's just plain wrong. Just plain wrong. Yeah, and, uh, and so that's, that's pretty much the same thing that the telephone companies used to argue. When, when I first got to Congress, are you ready for this? The argument made by AT&T, this very famous company, one million people will have cell phones by the year 2000. We had to break up that monopoly. You know how many people had cell phones by the year 2000? Everyone had one. <laughs> so that's where we are with the utilities who generate electricity as well. They just can't help themselves. It's part of being a monopoly. So that's what this bill is all about. Uh, it, will, it will break down the monopolies, allow for more competition. Uh, it will reduce greenhouse gases because obviously we're going to move from... Uh, gas and coal and other fossil fuels. Uh, it will require that the utilities are transparent. They gotta be honest about their emissions and they have to be honest about where their sources of energy are coming from. And it requires an online database so that customers know how energy is created and where it's coming from. What makes that all possible? Well. The broadband revolution makes that database possible that's easily accessible by anybody, including people in London right now who are watching this on Twitch. And, uh, and it establishes a level playing field to allow renewable energy resources to compete fairly in markets. So that's something that people don't understand, Josh. This, this competition uh, can only be created if there is a true level playing field. And there's a bias, is there not, amongst many utilities for the older energy sources? So the spill is intended to ensure that we have a true level playing field. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so these different regions of the country that are in charge of procuring capacity of the energy to plan for a reliable grid, which we should be doing, oftentimes will override state clean energy goals subsidies that these states have for solar and wind that makes them cheap. They're already cheaper, but these states want to make them even cheaper. But a lot of these regions in charge of the energy markets will say, no, 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 we need to make sure the cost of all this cheap electricity is brought up to be level with the more expensive natural gas and fossil fuels. So it artificially creates uh, or it artificially raises the price of these renewables and doesn't really let them truly compete and effectively keeps them yeah. offline. So we have to do that as well. It's not easy taking on monopolies or old thinking. So you have to have actually a plan that breaks down those barriers. And, uh, and so again, the bill, in order to protect against abuse, the bill will form an advisory committee to improve governance and stakeholder participation practices of grid operators. That is, that will have consumer groups in and environmental groups in, groups that represent uh, equity uh, to make sure that every part of the community is represented. We have to have full participation. Uh, we will identify, as part of this bill, inefficiencies in transmission uh, networks all across the country so that we can see which ones are still kind of the model T's, you know, the old uh, 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 systems that have not been upgraded to modern technologies. And it creates an office of transmission which will be within the Federal Energy Regulatory uh, Commission, meaning there'll be a cop on the beat in the federal government monitoring all of this to make sure that we're making true progress, that we're always pushing forward, that we're cutting through the red tape, that we're not allowing uh, for the laggards to ultimately dominate our electricity system. But we're gonna need someone uh, in, who, in the Office of Transmission, which we're gonna create, whose job it will be just to accomplish that. So, so Josh, what, what, what's the problem today? What, what, is the, what are the obstacles that are in place because we don't have all of these protections that are in law today. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of problems in terms of planning and building uh, these long transmission lines. Nobody wants to pay for this line, and I should say the utilities don't want to pay for a line to another area that is going to let 
clean energy they don't own onto the grid. And right now, the regulations don't fully account for all the benefits that these lines will bring, the benefit of clean energy and clean air, right? The benefit of a more reliable, interconnected, resilient grid. So when you have blackouts, you know, in one region of the country, you can move energy over. So all these things really need to be considered in a cost-benefit analysis so that the utilities are then sort of forced to account for these benefits and build these long distance lines that will really be the infrastructure to unleash the clean energy revolution. Yeah. So, you know, I've been working on this for a long time, uh, trying my best to create real competition. And it's a long time ago, but it was in 1992 that my bill passed. It was uh, wholesale wheeling. It's a way of bringing in the electricity, wind and solar, from a distance and then bringing it into the communities that um, that would benefit from it. And it started a revolution. Uh, wholesale wheeling, by the way, is not the name of a community in West Virginia. Uh, it's just a way of using the transmission lines to bring electricity into, uh, into places that otherwise it would be inaccessible. So it was a good idea, it was 1992, but then a bad thing happened. In 1996, in California, a Republican governor, Pete Wilson, he signed a new law. And this new law allowed for, yes, more competition uh, in California electricity marketplaces, but it was without any real regulation. So from Texas came a company, Enron, run by a guy named Ken Lay, a real cowboy, and he arrives in California saying, oh, there's no rules here? I'm just going to take advantage of this marketplace. And ultimately, a crisis got created because there were no regulations, no protections for consumers. They exploited it, and it led to a complete and total mess. And, you know, Mark Twain used to say that a cat that's been burnt on a hot stove, that cat won't get on a hot stove again, but it won't get on a cold one either. So unfortunately, because of what happened in California, a lot of people got afraid of dealing with these transmission issues. Even though if there are proper protections that are put in place, it is the way to bring in wind. It is the way to bring in solar. It is the way to save the planet. And so that's what the Charge It Act says. This time when we do it, we're gonna have safeguards. We're gonna have regulations. We're going to have protections. We're going to be saying to the Ken Lays of the world, you come into this market, you're going to get caught. You're going to be punished if you abuse it. And we're going to have the rules and regulations on the books to make sure that you pay a big price. So that's kind of the lesson that I learned, uh, that you just can't assume that everyone's a good person. They're not. Uh, and there are going to be bad guys out there, companies trying to exploit that's what happened with Enron. It will not happen because of the Charge Act. We've got to put it on the books and then trigger a revolution that has been somewhat delayed, but still more necessary than ever. So um, you've looked at this history, Josh. So Now it's the time, right? That now it's, it's primed for, for these to be put in place and, and really unleash this clean energy revolution. The, the key to the clean energy you know, transition is this clean energy transmission. So I think you very eloquently summed it up there. We, we do have one segment left, uh, you know, to sort of uh, paint a picture of everything we've talked about today. We thought we might have you actually draw a picture and pretend to be an artist. So maybe we could have you stand up and, and try to draw. I, I will try to do this, but the word, the key word there was not artist. The key word there was pretend. Okay. So I, I am a, Definitely a pretend artist here, but the goal that we have, and maybe you could give me some of these um, devices over here. Maybe you can give me solar. So, solar. so for solar in our country, and again, no matter what we're talking about here, we're talking about some of the richest renewable resources in the world. And we already have them, except when only exploiting a small fraction of them. And if we put a plan in place, we can move this clean energy from where it is. Here's solar. And I'm not telling anyone on Twitch where it's warm in the United States, but you all know that it's warm in this part of the United States, right? And if we captured that solar and started to wheel it 
started to move that energy to other parts of our country, we could have more energy than we would need for eternity. So that's part of it. Now, for wind, uh, wind is in, a, in different locations. It's along, let me get up here if I can. It's along, oh, it's along the East Coast of the United States. It's very, very rich. It's over here on the West Coast of the United States. Just incredibly uh, windy, very rich. It's here in the middle of the country. Just some of the strongest winds in the world are right here, right in the middle of the United States. And then geothermal. Geothermal is just a way of uh, just putting a, uh, just drilling down into the earth. And the deeper you go is the closer you get uh, to uh, the middle of the planet. And it's hot down there. And if we capture that geothermal, and that geothermal is in very large quantity uh, in a very large area of our country, we, it's very inexpensive to capture geothermal once we put together the technologies. And again, we want to wheel that technology, uh, that, that, uh, that uh, renewable energy resources, into where the population area is in our country. Uh, and for hydropower, uh, for hydropower, uh, we have a large, still untapped area of hydropower uh, in our country that uh, that we could use. It's very clean, very low cost, very efficient. And there's more hydropower over here too that we still have not fully captured, uh, which is, you know, Bonneville. I was just, this is where the Bonneville uh, Power Authority is. This is where the Tennessee Valley Authority is. But with a little bit of uh, ingenuity, uh, we can capture a lot more of it and then transmit it to where the population areas are in our country. So I'm not sure in the fifth grade I would have got any higher grade than the C I usually got in artwork, but I think everyone on Twitch gets the point that uh, we don't have to be dependent upon Middle Eastern oil. We don't have to be dependent upon Russian oil. We can do this right here. And in the same way that we, as a technology giant, unleashed this broadband revolution, we can do this revolution as well. Uh, we just have to charge it. We have to build the transmission lines. And if we do it, um, I think generations from now, people will look back and say, they discharge their historic responsibility, not just to our country, but to the entire planet. And again, you are a scientist. You, you know these issues. How possible is this? It's possible we just need the will to start, you know, planning effectively, pass the CHARGE Act, right, and, and take any investment, investments we get for transmission lines and really fully use that money to the fullest degree with all of these new regulations that you're proposing here. So it's possible we just have to find a way to have the will to get it done. Yeah. So it's like many other things um, historically in our country, things that people thought were impossible, but of course they're not. You know, when President Kennedy in 1961 at Rice University said, we're going to send a mission to the moon and we're going to return it safely by the end of the decade, eight years. And we will have to invent new metals. We will have to invent new transmission systems, more propulsion systems. And we'll have to bring it back through a heat half the intensity of the sun. And we have to do it all within this decade. And that is excited our country and we accomplished that goal we have to create the same mission for transmission in our country not extraterrestrial but terrestrial just do it along the land in our country protect the environment but capture this incredible god given blessing which our country has in terms of this wealth of renewable resources that can power our economy while protecting our planet forever. So this is the national security, environmental, economic, and moral issue of our time. Are we going to do this? Are we going to technologically respond to the challenge? And I know that we can do it. And you know one of the interesting things? This revolution, this digital revolution, we had to have that revolution in order to make this revolution possible because much of the management of all this electricity is going to be done because we now have broadband. We can now manage electricity. We can manage intermittency. 
we can manage uh, all of the flow of this electricity because we have a digital information technology that everyone thought was impossible before just 25 years ago when the Telecommunications Act passed. So it's doable um, and uh, it's necessary. Uh, Josh. Well, well said. I think that's it. We're about out of time. I just want to thank you for starting your Twitch streaming adventure today and, and helping return power literally to the people. So thank you so much. If you want to say goodbye to the audience and we'll see them next time. Hey, Twitch, uh, love being with you. And uh, this is just our first episode. Uh, love being with you. And, uh, and thanks for joining us today. There is no more important subject. It seems very simple, but in its simplicity, uh, is the answer uh, to so much that ails our planet. So thank you for joining us today. Thanks. Bye.